Got a big old toy hauler weekend warrior. This thing is huge. This roof is glued down pretty good. It's actually uh, got a good thickness to it. But this is a fleece back. Yeah. Yeah, and a fleece back will leave this fleece right there. So it's going to be real hard for us to put, you can't get that off. It would be really hard to, so we may have to redeck this thing. Overall, we don't see very much rot in the center portion over there. But look along here, we've got, this is where the termination bar was, or your gutter rail. You can see all that rust in there, so we're going to see what's in there. We've got a little bit, looks like moisture in here, so we're going to investigate that. This was the rail right here. See all the rust in the back? So this is aluminum, so it kind of tells you something's going on behind there. And that's what we're looking at right now. So we'll get that AC freed up, but we'd like to try to get the roof off first to see what's going on with it. So just looking at all that fleece, I know it's going to have to get some sort of redecking on here. And uh, so we'll be replacing, I believe it's this fan, with another one. And the those big vents down there, he wants all those removed and boxed off. He doesn't even want them there. So we're going to be getting rid of this funky looking antenna right here. We'll be getting rid of that. And what else are we going to be doing? Like there's, oh, this uh, luggage rail we're going to be getting out as well. Right here, this is going to go. We don't put that on there, don't need it on there. So. And I'll show you what we got around this other side over here. I'll give you an overview of the roof. Looks like we get some sort of a little bit of rot right there. I'm gonna take this other gutter rail off here. We got a little bit of rot right there. So at the very least, it looks like we may have at least these couple of corners to do. And then, but again, it still may need to be redecked because of the the fleece that won't come off. It's not like you can sand that off because there's glue underneath it. So even if you try peeling this, I mean, it would take so long. It's not worth it. You get it. Put another layer on it. So a little bit here, so just colored, so that just tells me there's some moisture in there. So when we open this up, but if you look over here, see how dry this looks right here? Then you come over here, see how dark that is inside there compared to this? So that just tells me that there may be some issues under there. It's just a red flag, so to speak. Let's see, that's about us. So, but this is a TPO roof, but this is um, RV grade TPO. It's not very thick, really thin, and uh, this is a fleece back, so if you have one of these and you bring it in, chances are we'll have to redeck the roof. Yeah. Uh, let's see, I think that's about it so far. I think we're boxing these off right here. I don't think he's going to have vents in there, just skylights, from what I understand. And um, that's about it. So, so far, now you can just see when we get started here, we've got the awnings protected here we got the awning protected on the opposite side as well and uh, we got uh, blankets and throws all inside where we work and walk all of these holes for the vents they're all blocked off so no trash can get down inside there so, but, uh, but we'll keep you updated on what's going on with this thing next clip coming up okay we are going to redeck this roof that's what we're gonna do look at all this damage on here very peculiar why we got all this damage here. Here's a con look at this. So this goes up inside the ceiling, right? And that's how you look at it. And the fan, the fan is in here, and the fan draws all the moisture from the shower right here, right? It draws all that moisture up. And where is it shooting it? Out these holes. I don't know who did this or why, but that is just not smart. Almost looks like it may be factory. If they thought that it was going to vent somewhere, where's it going to vent? They got a couple holes here and there, but that's that's not smart at all. There's another hole on the back side over here where my finger is, right there. So if all that moisture got shot into here, which it looks like, it could be a combination of things. But anyhow, we're going to rip all this decking up. I've never seen anything like that. I have seen in a house. In the bathroom, you have a vent that comes up, a fart fan, basically. But it also draws moisture when you get in the shower. And it'll 
take it and send it outside so you don't have all that moisture in there. And I did see one where somebody brought it up into the attic and brought it all the way down to where the gutter was, the fascia board, because it had a vent right here for the soffit on the bottom side. Okay, this is the house I'm talking about. And they figured all that hot air would go and just go down into that soffit, right? And then just get vented out. Well, it never did. It rotted 28 feet of fascia board off of that thing and the gutter fell off and the rafter tail to rot it. <laughs> so that's not a good thing. It needs to go out through the roof. That's the way it's designed. All right, so this is where we're at now. So like I said, we got a couple of sheets up there. And one of the things we're gonna do, we're gonna check for all these wires. See, that's what I don't like right here. Why do they not put those little bushings in there? Compromise these wires. I just don't like that. And then the other thing I want to check, make sure this was right. And then lastly, I want to make sure all these trunk lines are okay. And with the damage that we had down there, I want to check the insulation. I want to make sure it's not wet. I don't want to put a roof on where we got soft and wet insulation. That's not a good idea. So we're going to check all these trunk lines when we get a couple more up. And where they connect together, I want to make sure they're connected properly and that they're not compromised at all. We may run a little bit more tape around them. I don't know. We'll see when we get them. But these, I certainly don't like that. That just gets, you know, the wire can get compromised. This one doesn't look too bad, but we're going to be putting in some bushings in there. And then uh, this one just looks like it's pulled through here. I can't see the, I can't see the ferrule yet. Hey, get a little flashlight. But uh, that's what we're going to be checking there. And you can see all this. I don't know what that is. And I've never noticed it before, but I hope it's not any sort of bad stuff. So that's, uh, that's why we're pulling all this. It looks like it just may be some, some glue or discoloration in the actual sheathing. We got some other stuff, brand new. And it's got a couple of marks on it that I don't like. But that's just the way it came out of the factory, I guess. Here's another one right here. There's another one right there. So we'll be putting again, putting a ferrule in there. And like I said, we check all this, all this. We're gonna check it where all these wires come up. We're gonna be checking every one of those. And then uh, clean this up. This isn't even glued either. No glue. There's no glue on that. Look how far apart. Let's see if I got my tape measure. Here we go. Yeah, I'm on the ball today. I got my tape measure, my pen, and my knife. Look how far these are. It's like, uh, get the camera on it 15 16 inches for that one or this one here 16 inches apart that's all you got for your nailing now they did throw a couple of staples up in there to go around that box and then uh, there's a few staples here on the edge but in the field right here in the body of it mm, nothing got a few staples in here now we're gonna staple it together but uh, these are just not enough fasteners. The reason why they don't, I don't know why they don't sew it all up with the staples. They should, if they're not, especially since they're not gonna use glue. But gee whiz, they got these things down to a science where they go, no, nope, only put in X amount of staples, only put in X amount of screws, and that's how they, pennies and pennies and pennies they save is what they show their shareholders. Look how much, we saved $10 on that coach. Well, I know the cut, and we'll jack the price up 10,000. And uh, look at there, we're making money. And then the customer has, is the one that has to come back and deal with it. And one of the other reasons why we are redecking this is because this is a fleece. You can't get this off. It's a pain in the butt. So, you know, if this was my coach, I would want to take this up. And I'd want to see what is underneath this. What is going on? You know, you're going to put a new roof down. Let's not put it down on top of something. And a lot of these other companies, they just want to go over everything. You don't know what's underneath there. Uh, I wouldn't like to spray over anything at all. No way. Because you don't know what you're spraying over. So, like I said, that's, that's what we're doing right now. So we'll give you a, another update as we go along. Get all the decking off except for this one little piece right here. Now, these are the little bushings. This here, these don't cost anything. Literally, they're pennies. We gotta put them down inside here where that ferrule is. So the steel of the ferrule doesn't irritate or chafe the wire. So down here, that's just going through wood. So oh, you probably couldn't get this one in there, but we could probably try squeezing one in there just for the heck of it. Right there, see? Put down there to kind of protect it. So the other thing we want to look at is obviously the insulation. 
and now we're looking at you know, you got these wires that came up check all this want to check make sure that joint is good right here so we'll check that and then whatever other one you can see one back down that way looks like it terminates there we got one here so we're going to check that as well we'll probably just put some tape on it for the heck of it to make sure it don't breach even down the road because that tape looks like it's a little lifted so we're going to retape all those and then like i said we go through here put all the bushings in there see that's what we want to do get all that set clean up all this make sure all this is good that's what we're doing so we're really like we're doing a thorough inspection we'll take this up vacuum all this mess out of here we'll get that you can see we got all these bushings in here as well that's what you need to do you need to have these in here it's just not smart not to have them in there and yeah, weasel this one in a little better well, we'll get them to sit in there like I said we got some of this rot right here <coughs> you know this is just from the, the decking that we pulled off so everything looks pretty well so far and then um, like I said well we got the uh, the duct work right there that we're gonna check out right here right behind there it is right there so we'll get all that squared away I didn't see any wet insulation we may have to add a flavor or two in here possibly and then uh, we got to work this little piece out of here too of sheathing and then uh, we'll check this we we'll probably got to replace this piece right here at least add some sort of stock in there you know just seems soft so we want to make sure we put our screws in to get something to hold and that's all it does all this piece does this one down here where your termination bar goes in here you've got a rail gives it something to screw to and it also kind of cinches these together but that's the only purpose it really serves so it may or may not be worth trying to actually dig out we could probably put another piece of stock in here where we need and then the, we'd still have plenty for the screws to grab onto because it'd be back there right so that's a possibility but we'll explore a couple options here I try not to make more work than necessary but this one we again we may possibly be able to just cut that with an oscillating tool cut this piece out right about here and then just replace this one the same with probably the other side I see uh, the other guy over there giving me some signals that we probably want to do the same over there so that's about us so far and uh, we're going to get some new decking on here we're going to put some plywood on here and uh, we've got to obviously clean up all this off the trusses but you can see there's not any glue on these at all no glue I mean, you really want to have this glue down the glue acts as a buffer it absorbs a lot of the stress it keeps it off of the fasteners and it just helps keep the whole coach together really tight uh, but you know they don't do them anymore they don't glue anything anymore it's just uh, to them was not worth it you know get them get them built because to them they're looking at it like why put glue on there one of them waste the money to them they're wasting money on glue or spending money on glue but you still got to pay a guy to put the glue down you know then you need a glue applicator so all they just said oh the heck with all that. that that'll save us another ten dollars twenty dollars thirty dollars whatever it is and that's what they do they watch every little penny off these things and then they jack it up on the other end when someone wants to go to buy it so we'll get it fixed up that's where we are with our all right we got some insulation in this we loaded her up it was kind of scarce so we got to put the eight foot plywood on here we're going to use plywood that's what the uh the customer wants as well wants plywood plywood's eight foot this is 102 wide eight foot six so we're going to put a blocker here here and here which is the four foot we'll have a piece the one sheet will come over go back and then in this spot we're going to have a six inch piece and then we're going to jog it so you'll have a full sheet from here over there the next jog will be over there that's six inch and it'll zigzag back and forth to keep all the strength in it so that's what we got going on all that that other issue that we were talking about in the uh, that vent that was way up there that had the holes in the garnishment uh, the owner he did that he said he did that to help try to vent out because he thought there was some uh, moisture in there he thought it would hold better or something so actually he did that but uh, other than that we're ready about ready to rock and roll with some decking we're going to get it all glued up fastened down and uh easy pieces okay so you can see we got the decking going on and then we got 
because this is like I was explaining this is uh, 102 wide so being that wide these are only eight foot the eight and a half wide so we put a blocker in here in every one of these see right here all glued you can see and then we're gonna put a little piece in here we'll put a six inch piece there and then see how this one is so we're, what we're doing is jogging the layers the customer really wanted the plywood on there and uh, and I like the plywood better too myself but um, that's what we're up to so everything's glued and tattooed so you just staple it all down you put too many screws in here you can't put all these screws in these truss assemblies see you start putting screws in here you'll split that you won't have any strength at all you have to staple it so and then uh, we load it up with insulation and we'll get all this pulled back in it's just been moved around for the work that we got to do but it'll fall back in meaning the work meaning those pieces to go in that's where we're at right now getting her done all right so we have got the deck down it's all been glued and fastened we'll staple the bejesus out of this thing that's for sure that's right and then so you can see how we got a jog here and then this one doesn't have one because it's on the other side over there see like this one doesn't so we alternated it and uh, then after we got all that done we put a sander on it sand it down make sure it's nice we also taped up the uh, ductwork again just uh, we just went around it didn't really need it but we said what the heck we already had it open and then uh, so we did all that got the repairs done there's a skylight that's why it's bumped up right there that's a skylight it's gonna end up getting cut out but uh, the next step is to run over this with these protective strips like we have here this is gonna protect the roofing right here there's the fiberglass so the sheet the main sheet will come over and it'll protect it so, from any chafing or anything so uh, we got this going on and we also have going on right here as well they just haven't been brought up yet but uh, other than that, like I said, this is a skylight right here, so we'll end up cutting that out because there's no stock in there for the way this laid out. But um, we'll get that on. And then uh, we also have a protector strip that'll go on top of this to protect it as well. So we gotta do that. We had this piece that's buried all the way up in here. It's not worth trying to pull out. It wasn't, it wasn't rotted or anything. So we just trimmed it where we could work with it and keep going. So the same with the other end too. There's probably about a, maybe eight foot or eight inches or a foot on the, the back end as well. That's the same way. So like I said, we'll get this fixed up too and we'll get that straightened out. But uh, that's about where we're at so far. So the next step again, getting these strips on and then uh, roll the roofing down. Let's see, we do that uh, as soon as we can. But we go as fast as we can, but we don't want to rush a job and miss a step or miss something we have to do. So we're definitely gonna go over all this and make sure all the stables down, everything is nice, smooth, so we can just keep moving forward. Okie doke, we just got the roof rolled out. We got the deck all squared away. And we'll roll this over afterwards. We'll roll the roofing over. But we've got all our protective strips on there. We've got all of those. Everything is squared away. we we'll see them all under here. They run all the way across. So that's what we got now. Got to cut the roofing. Once we get it cut from the roll, because it's still sitting on the roll actually, that's where we roll it out. We've got a uh, fork truck sitting right there, which has got a uh, little roller assembly that I made that the roofing sits on and then it comes over a wheel and then we just roll it out it's easy peasy okay on this side we've already got it glued this is a driver's side so we get that glued laid down now what we're doing is just making sure it stays down nice and tight with that big roller so we'll do this other side here We do the other side. This one isn't isn't done, but that one's already glued over there, like you said, on the driver's side. And uh, we take our shoes off because some of the the black soles and everything that are on your shoes, they'll scuff the roof. It's just left for us to clean. That's all. So that's the next step. Pull this over, glue it, roll it, same way. Get turn bar on. Start cutting for our holes and everything. This is the driver's side. We are getting it loaded up with some adhesive. Uh, 
And once it flashes off, then we roll it over and pow, she done. Then we take the big roller here, pack her down, and that'll be good. Be rocking and rolling. This uh, fine coach came from Toronto, Canada, eh? I think you always have to say A eh, after every sentence, A. Eh? So, but uh, that's what we're doing right there. You see, we're getting it all mopped up right there. All right, so we got this driver's uh, passenger side. We've got it rolled, and that's what we're doing now with the big roller. Roll the roofing over, and now we're just making sure it's staying down really good. You really want to roll these down well. You can't roll like that with the roller we have. You cannot do that on rubber because the rubber kind of falls up or gets all in front of the roller and you can't run. It's kind of like trying to wheel something across carpet like that. It just, it won't do it. So, uh, but on TPO, this is a much better product. This is a 60 mil GAF brand TPO and it's uh, what's called structured. And if you look in there, you'll see little squares. You know, I get closer and I see how little squares in there. There's a, a mesh in there where it gives it strength from impacts on like hail or tree branches and things like that. So you can see that little fiber right there in the corner. There it is right there. So that's the mesh that's inside there that gives it all its strength. So now the next step for us to do is cut out the vent holes, air conditioning, plumbing, those type things and get all the components on the roof, get them all heat welded in. This will get pulled back down like this. We get the rails down there, the awning rail and the gutter rail. We've got those down there and we're going to paint them up so we can put them on so they look nice and clean. And uh, so that's where we're at so far. Well, we got it coming together. The customer did not want any vents on there. Went out and bought this. It's a white plexiglass. That's what he wanted on there. One, two, on all three of them. So we redid the back turn bar here. We got to just cut the roofing. But we redid that because the other was too bulky and it would come down and hit right in here if you remember on, even if you rewound the video here. But there was a big transition and I didn't want all that. I wanted it nice and smooth. So basically what we did is we kind of brought this up a little bit and then we also shaped this back here too as well so everything kind of conforms and is nice and fluid going around. But we still got a little bit of work to do. You can see we got all our tools up here. We just got the turn bar on and you can see we put the screws in. You can see all that caulking that comes through. See, that's all sealed now. Everything's sealed. But then we have a strike on here. We're going to put another strike and then one on top of it. So that'll double layer that up pretty well. And uh, just got this boot welded in over here. I'm just checking this little bell cap and make sure it, it looks well. That's what I was trying to do. Just want to make sure the pipe wasn't too high or anything. Uh, maybe we'll trim it down just a shade. But uh, that's, uh, that's what we got going on right now. I've got a skylight, um, the skylight curb right there is going down. And I got a couple more boots in there to weld. So that's about where we are right now. Uh, just wanted to give you a little bit of an update and how far we're coming along here. But it looks good. Customer's been in here looking at it day by day. He's from Canada, so he's been staying around and uh, been visiting us to see how it's coming along. And he seems to be happy. And that's the goal. So we're, uh, next clip will probably be when we finish up. I'm still going to make up the logo to go in the back. And uh, that's it. Let me get to work on cutting this pipe right here, cutting that down. And then, uh, like I said, we'll get back with you. A big weekend warrior is done. Uh, the customer wanted that plexiglass. I think I mentioned that on the clip. He doesn't want them. This is the toy hauler part anyways. So you see we got our brand on there. RVRoofInstall.com April of 2019. So let's get down here and we'll show you what we got. All right. Now uh, you can see our mop boy is cleaning the roof got two layers all the way down here like we did change out the spline this spline or uh, screw cap cover it, it snaps in and out on there there's a groove in it stuff is great um, so we use that now we don't use that other cheap stuff all these curbs they all have their flanges on there so we can heat weld it around also has some counter flashing on there that's the counter flashing going across also has a recession where it goes down so any water that hits the top there can't roll back in this way. They're all the same. You got our plumbing. You got that welded in. 
Get a couple of these stands in the back of the AC. It just gives it some balance, that's all. And you can see we got this big counter flashing on the front of the air conditioner right here. We've got our antenna to get that put in there. So we are we are scooching along here. And if you look and you may be able to notice like a couple of it looks like strips up underneath the roofing right here and here everywhere there's a sheet of decking where it comes together on the seams. We put protective strips that go over there. We showed you that when we were rolling the roof down. Same thing with the, the edges. There's protection on the edges as well. So we always put two layers along the top here because if you ever ran a caulking gun, you start squeezing along and you'll hear it pop and crackle. And when you hear it pop and crackle, you just injected an air bubble. So go over it again with one more layer, cut the tube wider, go over it with one more layer. And what that does is it'll make sure that if the one underneath of that ever breaches well i doubt you're gonna have one air bubble over another so got the same two stands right here and we've got a in the front there you can see we've got our counter flash right here okay so we got all that and that's so when water comes down this way if you notice i'll show you what we do that the front of the air conditioner always sits closest to the front of the curb so I want to make sure the water coming down here doesn't want to trickle back underneath and get into that foam gasket. Now on the sides there's plenty of room and also there's a corrugation in a way up underneath the pan on the underside here. So any water that gets in there is going to get washed out. But in the front, I don't want any water, especially as you're traveling, to get try to get blown back up into the gasket. So we put this flashing detail on there. And uh, I'll go around the other way too and, and show you on there. Kind of give you the low down. And we went around the top of the window. We we'll to change this out for them as well. We we'll change that. And this is the plumbing right here. Oh, let's hear the radio. <laughs> Put the radio there. And then all he wanted was this one fan in here. So he picked up this Max Air. And then he also, even on the skylight, he went and got this uh, nice plexiglass. This is white. That's the way he ordered it. So he he wanted it all changed out to that Lexan. And that's uh, but that's us. We've got some gutters on here to kick the water away. You got all that, and um, that's about it. It's about ready to head down the road. So the next step that we do is we're gonna stretch the scaffold apart because they're all on casters. You can see they're all on wheels. So we're gonna stretch this apart and we're gonna open up those slide outs and we're gonna check that as well. But uh, you can see we got our plumbing boots on there. And those, those, again, all this is all heat welded in here. It's not just right here. The whole thing is all heat welded in there. And what's great about these plumbing right here is even if, even if you, you, the tree branch had clipped this, it's going to pop right off. It's still not going to leak. It'll go down the holding tank. Can't leak here and here. It's all sealed. There's no way it's going to happen. Well, we fabricate every one of these in the shop everything we fabricate here in the shop but we don't sell them these are all proprietary to us they're patent pending products but uh, they're proprietary to RV roof and saw we don't even offer any roof kits um, maybe down the road we will but right now it's gonna be real hard for us to do that so the roof system is a 60 mil GAF grade structured membrane this GAF is called Evergard it's the same roof system you'll find on uh, a restaurant on a office building, a hospital, same exact installation procedures. So all we did is just kind of scale everything down. I designed these curves up so they work and function properly for an RV. Um, but it's an exact replica of a commercial roof. It is a commercial roof. So, thanks for watching. You may be saying, wait a minute, I thought we were done with this video. What are we doing? If you look at the first clip when we started doing this, what I noticed was this piece, this counter flash piece, was too close to the roof. I didn't like it, and I figured if there was any vibration, I didn't want it to kind of hit along the roof. So that's what you're fixing. See, uh, see the gap underneath this one? That's what we should have, the nice gap underneath there. All we needed to do is go below the flashing on the curb, and you can see the gap underneath there. That's what I'm talking about. So that's. When I went around and did the video, I didn't like it, so I said take it apart. We do it right. That's what we do here. We do it right. 
take it apart if it's not done right. There's only two ways to do things in this shot. It's right and again. Thanks for watching.